Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from any part of the world you are watching this video. My name is David Atada. I'm welcoming you to Good Vine Educational Series with the title Success is Who You Are. Foremost, I want to appreciate our, our new subscribers on YouTube channel. I want to also appreciate many people who send their kind words as regards the first video I made about Terera Trends. Thank you so much. Uh, your, your, your compliments and uh, serve as motivation for me to do more in the subsequent videos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. This week, I promised in the last video to continue in the story of Terra Trends by drawing out lessons from the story of, of, which, of which I hope that I'm going to title it uh, Steps in Naturalizing Your Dream. But I felt a need to do this because of the incessant rapes, the a rape scandal that has bedeviled our society these days. Recently, we heard about the news of one Miss Uwa Laomozwa, a student of, of University of Benin that was gang raped inside a church while she was there studying, studying uh, reading her books. Also about uh, Azizat um, uh, Shomi Iwa and Barakat Belo, who were gang, who were, who were all raped and murdered in, in Ibadan. I really believe that our, our, our society needs to wake up to the responsibility of bringing rapists to justice. Alright, this incident is not only occurring in Nigeria, although our attention is now drawing is to the incessant increase in the daily increase of this rape of this rape scandal all over our country. I saw a video of a girl named Kelly who was raped by her foster parents, her foster dad at the age of five and later went, as a result of this, she went into prostitution at the age of 11. I've been raped, I've been molested, I've been tortured. At what age? My first time ever being raped, I was five. By who? My foster parent, he raped me, um, and, his, and the foster mom, she knew, but she never, like, she never, she didn't care. She, or, that's what it looked like. Cause I know exactly what he did to me. I remember him coming in the door. I remember everything. Me and my foster mom were just watching a movie. He walked in drunk. He had a, a, a cup of alcohol in his hand. And um, you know, he pretty much like asked me to come into the room or whatever. And with me being five years old, you know, I'm not expecting this or whatever. So like, he just grabbed me up and like, covered my face and told me to be quiet and just did it and it was just like blood everywhere I was screaming she came in this is how the police was called she came in and she was like what are you doing what are you doing he hit her but I guess I found out later that they had already history of abuse problems in their relationship so this is why she never cared about him continuing to do it but like I said, I will have memories in my head of certain things as I'm getting older and I'm like, why would I think these things if it didn't happen, you know? This is a girl that had great dreams and ambitions, but it looked as though her, all, all her dreams and ambitions had been shattered on the altar of sexual abuse. Do you have any hopes and dreams of doing anything else in life? I want to go to school. I want to learn more. I want to... I want to be a lawyer. I want to do cosmetology. But I don't know if I can because I haven't been in school since I was 11, yeah. 10. So you never went to high school? Never been to high school. That's so embarrassing to say. No, no. I've never been to high school. I, I, all I know is the streets. The truth is that we have a lot of Kelly outside there in the streets, in hotels, in our cities, in our villages, whose hope and dream seems to have been shattered due to sexual abuse. Our society needs to understand this, that there is a lot of trauma, psychological and emotional trauma that rape, that rape victims pass through. Most of them pass through uh, intensive depressions. Many of them battle with flashbacks nightmares, stress, 
sleeping disorders. In fact, a lot of them are uh, have to battle with what we call mental health challenges. Many of them have, have the, the developing ability uh, to trust people again. They, they, they cannot trust people again. Many of them experience painful sexual life. Some are some, some eventually become sexual addicts. Some will have quest for revenge. They want to take uh, take vengeance, lost into their hands. Many of them become rapists themselves. They become rapists themselves. Many of them experience guilty conscience. They are always guilty. And the, 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 the worst part of things is many of them people think of committing suicide. But you're thinking of trying to kill yourself. What, what was it's, that? Because you don't see hope, you don't see... I feel like, what am I here for? No one loves you. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody, like I told you, nobody checks on me. Nobody does anything for me. I have, I've been selling my vagina since I was 11 years old. And before that, I got raped treacherously, molested treacherously, abused, tortured treacherously. My... M I don't even like to show my body. I hate myself. In the midst of these challenges, the only thing some people think that they can offer them is to keep on casting a uh, aspersion on them on social media, stigmatizing them, finding fault as the as for reasons why they were raped. I think this needs to stop. Our society needs to uh, encourage rape victims to seek professional help so that they can overcome every challenges that they are passing through as a result of, 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 of being a rape victim. If you are a rape victim and you are watching this video now, uh, I, I know a lot of questions are going across your heart. You are, you are asking if God still loves you despite what happened to you. The, pro, the, the, the answer is yes, he still loves you. I know you are still asking that where was he? When you are passing through this, uh, all these messes, honestly, I don't have answers to most of the questions that uh, that are going through your mind now. But I've come here to inspire you with the story of a woman I know that passed through what you passed through. Probably, if, I'm very sure uh, if she passed through what you passed through more than you do, and probably maybe uh, you, you, you experienced more than she did. But I just feel like a story can inspire you or, or, or as far as not giving up on your dreams and aspirations. Because you are ready, the greatest strategy that can ever happen to a man is when he falls, is, it, is his inability to rise up each time he falls. Yes, God can turn your mess into a message. God can turn your pain into gain. Alright, I've come to inspire you with the story of a woman called Joyce Mayer. Joyce Meyer was raped by her own biological father for a minimal time of 200 before she was 18. Yes, I mean the father whom she was supposed to trust. The father whom she, whom she, she he was supposed to be a, 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 a guy, a protector around her as a female child, raped her for a minimal time of 200 before she was 18 years old. I was sexually, mentally, emotionally, and verbally abused by my father as far back as I can remember until I finally left home at age 18. I did a little bit of math and realized that my father, whom I was supposed to be able to trust, who was supposed to keep me safe, raped me a minimum of 200 times before I became 18. Now, how can that have happened to me and me stand here before you today in the condition I'm in today if God is not alive and well on planet Earth? How is that possible without God? In spite of all these messes, in spite of all these pains, God turned a life around. Today, Joyce Meyer is a voice blessing millions of lives around the world. <laughs> is to give God your pain and let him turn it into gain. <laughs> to give him your mess and let it become your message. 
Because you see, when I tell you that I know what it's like to hurt, you believe me. And when I tell you my testimony and I tell you that I am healed and whole and sane and well, and I've got a great marriage of 43 years and four kids that are serving God and 10 grandchildren, and that I love my life, and I think I'm being a value to the kingdom of God, then that gives you hope. That gives you hope that God will do it for you. Amen? And that's why I'm doing this, because I want, I want people to know how good God is and that your struggle is worth it. Your journey is worth it. Don't give up. Don't give up. That is coming from somebody that has passed through a lot. She's telling you not to give up. She's telling you that you can still achieve your dreams and aspirations. But in this series, I've compiled all our story as narrated by her, the sexual abuse by her dad, and how God favored her with a good and loving husband in the person of Dave Mayer. All right, uh, sit down. I'm going to be back in a moment. Good education is the best legacy you can give to your child. At Good Vine College, Shankisha Magodo, we believe in developing the total child with high academics, right moral and social values. We use innovative teaching methods to unlock the potentials of dynamic and godly leaders of tomorrow. We make your dreams come to reality through our conducive classrooms, serene environment, well-equipped laboratory, comfortable hostels and shuttling buses. Our core values include integrity, team spirit, innovation, and excellent performance. Right now, admission is on for the 2020-2021 academic session. Entrance examinations into GSS1, GSS2, SS1, and SS2 will be announced soon. For further inquiries, please contact Goodvine College 2, Olutamos Close, of Olayemi Odutayo Street, Shangisha Magodo, Lagos. Telephone. 0905-359-0643-0907-655-5012-0816-426-9106-0816-426-9106 You can also reach us via the following online channels Email goodvineschools at yahoo.com Info at goodvineschools.com Visit our website www.goodvineschools.com Goodvine College Raising Godly Champions for Global Society Welcome back. Let's move straight to the story. Something about Joyce Paul Joyce Oxenson was born on June 4, 1943. When she was giving birth, little did she know that she would be passing through a great tumor in, the, uh, in her heli, starting from her heli life. Little did she know that she would be emotionally, verbally, mentally, and sexually abused by her father. Talking about Joyce's father, Joyce's father, before Joyce was even given birth to, had joined the military. He was part of those people that fought in the Second World War. He was a very strong and choleric man. His nature transcends into the way he organizes and controls his home as the head of the family. In the home, it was very strong, very choleric. Listen to what Joy said about the choleric nature of his father in the home. Play my f I lived in a very uh, controlled atmosphere. I mean, he was a very much a controller. And, and I always say, you know, you watched what he wanted to watch on television. You got up when he got up. You went to bed when he went to bed. He decided what the meals were going to be, and you had to eat them. And. Uh, it, you know. On June 5, 1943, Joyce's father left for World War II. For the next three years, Joyce will only be seeing his father just only once. After he came back from the war, he became addicted to alcohol. He was bitter and he was so angry. So that it was during that moment that he subjected his daughter to sexual abuse. Her father, through lies, Fears, threats, and manipulations started subjecting Joyce to sexual abuse. My father did many perverted things. And you can believe me today when I tell you that I'm only going to tell you a few. 
There are some that would be way too distasteful for me to try to talk about in a crowd like this. He made me look through the keyhole and watch him and my mother having sex, and then I was supposed to tell him how it made me feel. If I walked into a room where he was and nobody else was in there, he would grab himself or reveal his private parts as if that was supposed to excite me. Anytime he had opportunity, he grabbed me in personal places, so I despised even having to go into a room where he was at. And I remember when I was at home, my greatest goal was to stay out of the space he was in. If he would go to the basement or the garage to do some work, he would tell me to wait five or ten minutes and then come where he was at, act as if I was looking for him, and then he would molest me in those situations, touching me and make me touch him. I was continually fearful that my mother would come in the room and catch him and blame me. When he was going to go places in the car, he told me to beg to go with him in front of my mother, and then he would tell me no, and then I was supposed to keep trying to get him to let me go until he finally gave in, and so it's kind of interesting. He had this thing all set up to where it looked like it was me. I, of course, did not really want to go because I knew what was going to happen if I went, but I had to do what I was told. My mother went to the grocery store every Friday morning and I so desperately wanted to go with her and he would make me beg to stay home or make an excuse about why I couldn't go. And then while she was gone, he would rape me. When we went swimming, I had to ask him to teach me to swim so he could take me out in the water and put his hands on me. As a result of the persistent increase uh, in sexual abuse molestation by a dad, Joyce Melinda felt safe at home again. I never felt safe. For example, my father worked nights, and so he would he would go to work about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and get home around uh, midnight. And if I was awake and I would hear his key in the lock, <gasps> I'd feel that fear because you never, I never knew what he was going to do. Every Saturday night, he would go out and get really, really drunk. That was like his big entertainment for the weekend was, you know, he'd finish his work week on Friday, and then every Saturday afternoon, early afternoon, he'd go out and start drinking, and then he'd come home somewhere between midnight and four or five o'clock the next morning. Even on so-called good days, good, you know, days when there wasn't some kind of sexual abuse or, or days when, you know, he and my mother weren't having real problems, uh, the atmosphere that we lived in was just supercharged with fear because you never knew. There was no stability. It could turn. Yeah, yeah, there was no stability. So you never knew what might set him off. Uh, you could do one thing one time and he might be totally fine with it. But depending on his mood, another time it might make him mad. As a result of this, the sexual abuse continued. In fact, there was a day when uh, Joyce, was Joyce was with her father the father raped her at the back seat of his car and she was caught by, by, by police. Joyce was very happy because finally to her, uh, that would be uh, a moment of her release from the sexual cage of her dad. But unfortunately, reverse was the case. On Saturday night, when I got into my teenage years, where he would get very drunk, and then he'd force me to have sex with him in the back seat of the car. Once a police officer caught him and I thought, finally, somebody's gonna help me. I was so glad. But he and my father talked outside the car for a while and my dad finally told me, he said, I told him you're my cousin and he promised to let us go if I would let him have sex with you so you're gonna just have to do it because otherwise we're gonna end up going to jail. Well, thank God the police officer got a call on his radio and I got out of that one. Joyce one day determined to write a letter to, his, to her dad. She wrote the letter, but the letter just made the, it made the man mad and she, he got angry at him until Joyce uh, finally apologized to the man again. She later took the decision of informing relatives, telling relatives, uh, but the relatives did not believe her and some of them that believed did not want to get involved uh, in the matter. The most uh, disgusting part of this sexual abuse, according to Joyce, is one day when her dad was uh, teaching her how to drive, she he drove to the graveyard 
and as, uh, at the graveyard, the man molested and raped her. One of the things I remember that was probably one of the most disgusting to me was when I got old enough to learn how to drive, my father would take me out every Sunday afternoon for a driving lesson. And of all the ridiculous places to take me to do what he was going to do to me was he took me to a graveyard. And that's where he'd have sex with me in the car. And if anyone came around, then we'd have to get out of the car and pretend like we were looking at graves and six, 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 six. When the situation continued and there was no, there was no any changes, at 18, Joyce decided to run away from home. So she left home, left at that house and ran away. It was after she left home that she ran into a man who showed interest in her. Unfortunately, the relationship was short-lived as this man only took advantage of Joyce. Joyce called him a manipulator. After five years, Joyce met a man by, by occupation. He was a draftsman engineer. He was washing his mom car one day and he saw Joyce. And after a few days, they started dating and later on, he married her. This man would be one great instrument that would influence Joyce's Joyce temperament, his mood, and calm her down a bit. This man will eventually be a great support and a great influence on Joyce, her life, her destiny, and more importantly, on her ministry. The man is no any other but the mayor. True patience, faith, prayers, and unconditional love. Dave, little by little, changed Joyce's bitterness and derogatory sense of uh, sense of sex that is left on her due to sexual exploitation that she has experienced for her young age. Honestly, I really think that we need to just appreciate God for blessing us with people, uh, people who are bearing David. People who are bearing David are always loving, peaceful, and sweet persons you can ever relate with. I tell you the truth and I lie not. In 1976, Joyce claimed that she received a message from God which left a deep impact on her and made her discover a real love for God's word. This was her journey into life transformation. After receiving a call to full-time ministry, one day Dave received a message from God and persuaded his wife, Joyce, to uh, extend her ministry to a television broadcast. That was the beginning of enjoying everyday's life. Needless to say today that enjoying everyday's life has become a huge hit and is blessing millions and billions of people all around the world today. Enjoying everyday's life is being broadcast in 40 languages and is on 900 TV and radio stations and is reaching 4.5 billion viewers all across the globe. Today, Joyce Meyer is a proud author of more than 100 books. Out of her book, I think I've read Battlefield of the Mind, I've read Managing Your Emotions, How to Hear from God, and Me and My Big Mouth. Yes, Me and My Big Mouth. I read that book. She, she, she's an author of more than 100 books. I, I really believe that mm, her book will be of help to you. Get any of her book, her book will be of help to you. Today, Joyce conducts in both international and domestic conferences all over the world and shares her testimony, encouraging people to enjoy their everyday life, irrespective of any abuse, irrespective of any intricacies, and anything that they have passed through in, in, in the time past. This is the person that went, that passed through a lot of things. This is a person that, oh, oh, about how I've been written up, but yet, God still picked her up for the mighty clay and made her to and set her feet upon the high places. I really believe that God uh, can do that for you also if you really believe. It will turn your life around, it will give you a new song to sing, it will give you a new beginning. 
yours is going to also be your life is also going to be a message to as many people who would want to who may want to give up as a result of being a victim of sexual abuse i believe god is going to strengthen you and will be with you and we are able to, uh, to achieve all your goals your dreams and purpose in the name of jesus christ amen and amen before i round all this section let me leave you with this message from joyce mayer listen and enjoy Let's talk about that for a minute. I prayed for my dad to die, that didn't happen. I prayed for my mother to leave him, that didn't happen. I prayed he'd leave me alone, that didn't happen. Why didn't God help me? I was praying, I was asking him, I was this innocent little kid being abused. Well, you know what, I don't have the answers to all that, but I can tell you that by faith I now understand. That's why that scripture that I shared last night about by faith we understand how the world was made. You know, I. I I can't explain it to you in my mind, but I know that God didn't get me out of it, but he did give me the strength to go through it. God had a plan. And I cannot explain this to you, so don't even ask me to. But for years I said, of course, I wish that I would have never been abused. But God has helped me recover. And about three years ago, I said that, but of course, I wish I wouldn't have been abused, and God stopped me, he said, stop saying that. And then I, I thought about it, and I thought, and I know this sounds crazy, but I'm glad it happened. You know why? Because I'm a better person now than I ever would have been. To make any sense out of that but I know that I know that I know that God has redeemed me and he has taken what Satan meant for harm and worked it out for good and I'm a better person than I would have been had it not happened and you can be too I'm stronger I know God better I understand people's pain and I believe it's I believe that it's made reach out to you in your pain and your need and to tell you with all passion God is alive he loves you he's got a good plan for your life and don't you ever doubt that don't ever doubt that can you recover you're looking at somebody who did You can recover. There's no pit so deep that he can't reach down in it and lift you out. He will set your feet on a rock. He will give you a wonderful life. He will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will make you a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And he will give you a double blessing for your farmer trouble. Come on, give God praise. With that, we've come to the end of this show, this goodbye educational series with the title Success is Who You Are. Thank you so much for staying all true. Let me also appreciate my good friends that has been uh, that has been of good support to me since the inception of this show. I want to appreciate uh, Adepte Jadebe, my friend in Dublin. I want to appreciate my friend, the uh, pastor, the grand pastor of the uh, Living Faith Church, Winners Chapel, Otuwa Sega, by Esther State. Thank you so much. I miss you. I want to appreciate Adeshikbe Mayo Mikum Deborah. I want to appreciate my good students, my, my number one fan in Good Vine School, Convenant and Faith Adelaja. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I love all of you. Thank you so much. All right, before I call it quit on uh, today's show, let me tell you much more about Good Vine Schools. Good Vine College is a school that is committed to developing the total child with high academics, rights, moral, and social values. We serve as an institution that uses innovative teaching to unlock the potential of dynamic and godly leaders of tomorrow. 
Our school is situated at number two, Olu Thomas Close, of Olayemi Street, Shangisha Magodo, Lagos. Our school is blessed with educational facilities that will enhance learning and make learning conducive for your children. A trial will definitely convince you. For more inquiries, you can call the numbers displayed on your screen or you can um, contact us or you can call, visit the school website on www.goodvineschools.com. A trial will definitely convince you. God bless you as you do so. With that, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for staying all through. Till next time, I'm going to be coming across your way again. I still remain David Atanda. Stay blessed. Stay safe. I love you all. Bye.